Japan. Konnichiwa. Hour one and I'm getting checked in by a robot. The tech capital of the world. Konnichiwa. Arigato gozaimasu. And home to this year's Olympic and Paralympic Games. This is the new national stadium. It's the main venue for the Tokyo Olympics. Tokyo 2020! The country last played host back in 1964, leaving the Shinkansen, or bullet train, as its legacy. So it's no surprise then that the world is waiting with bated breath to see what technological innovations are in store for the 2020 Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games. Wow! This is so cool! And on today's episode, we're giving you a sneak peek. The Tokyo Olympics are just months away, and with an estimated 700,000 people expected to pass through Japan's Narita International Airport over the summer, the latest in cutting-edge technology is clearly visible from the moment you land. I really feel like a robot. It's like I have an exoskeleton. This power suit is a wearable device that alleviates burden to the waist when lifting heavy objects. It's just like engaged when she hit the power button. Oh yeah. Woohoo! So that's huge because you guys are about to have the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics here, and there are going to be so many people coming through this airport. Whoa. Wow. That's so much easier. Never felt stronger. Also helping with the influx of visitors is the latest in face recognition technology. So there's facial recognition cameras here and here. Oh, here and here and here. This is going to be huge for Tokyo Olympics because this saves so much time in line. And aviation isn't the only mode of transport that's getting a tech upgrade in preparation for the Tokyo Games. So right now we're on the automated driving bus, and we do have a driver. I know it's still part of the testing phase, but once uh, yeah, the regulations yeah, yeah, change, yeah, yeah, yeah. this bus will be on its own. Ah, uh, yeah. The driver just pushes it out. And then it goes automatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. automatic. That's yeah. what's happening right now. Yeah. So he's not even holding the wheel. Holding, yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah. We are on an automated bus right now. Nobody is driving this bus. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Also scary. Smooth ride, though. Juxtaposed against this vision for the future is a prefecture that also offers a journey to the past. Look at all the gold. Where timeless temples, it is really so beautiful, and sweeping shorelines coexist alongside cutting edge technology. The temple is considered one of the five most important Buddhist temples in Japan. And this whole other world is just a stone's throw from the airport. People often think Narita is just an airport town. Yeah. But this town has been known as the temple town. Mm -hmm. And actually, the town of Narita built around the temple. That's how it started 300 years ago. Something smells good. Well, that's the oldest rice cracker shop. It's all homemade. Mmm. So good, miso flavor. It's such a hidden gem and it's like hidden in plain sight, 10 minutes from the airport. Yes. Head further south into Chiba and you'll find the perfect antithesis to the vibrant hub of Narita. That's Mount Fuji right there. Wow, in all her glory. With Mount Nokogiri offering stunning views. This is beautiful. Yes. Oh my god. And a chance to see the largest rock carved Buddha in Japan. That is mind blowingly beautiful. His eyes are half open, as if to looking down at you. I just have to stop and like marvel. 
With its mild climate and rich natural environment, Chiba overflows with beauty both inland and on the coast. With Kamagawa City boasting stunning flower fields and terraced rice plains. It's really nice here, it's so green and lush. It's kind of like a giant maze. While Minamiboso City proves just why Chiba has been chosen to host the Olympic surfing events. Surfing in Japan was awesome. I got my butt kicked, I got spanked a bit, but that was so much fun. And as the sun sets over Tokyo Bay, Chiba stands proud as the prefecture where tech and tradition merge as one. Hello world, Robot Jax has arrived. I come in peace. From humanoid robots designed to help in the research of applying robots to everyday life. Whee! Yeah! <laughs> That's what's up. To robots in charge of security. This guy here is Hugo. Right now he's making the rounds and checking locks. Thank you, Hugo, for keeping us safe. To companion robots. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. They react when you pick them up, when you tickle them, when you hug them. Japan has always played a central role in the development of technology. For all of you out there with your giant 4K TVs, this blows it out of the water. <laughs> Giving the world game-changing inventions that have shaped society and the way we live. And laying at its very heart is Olympic and Paralympic host city, Tokyo. With only months to go before the opening ceremony, it's expected to be the most innovative games to date. And I'm getting an exclusive look at some of the technologies. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Jax. Welcome to ANA. What exactly is an avatar? I mean, I am one right now. Yeah, so typically when people think about the word avatar, they think of characters that you create in virtual reality and online games to represent yourself. But we're kind of taking a, a new spin on that word, and we're talking about physical systems, essentially robots that you're able to embody from a remote location. Ooh, I see beautiful, shiny things. Today we're at the Nihonbashi Mitsukoshi department store, and you're going to experience the world's first avatar shopping experience. I was actually looking for something for my dad. He like loves ties. Yeah, that sounds great. Ooh, a classic stripe. I like that one. Do you have anything with maybe a little more color? Ooh, I like that one. Can you hold it up a little higher so I can see the bottom? How do you anticipate this avatar technology being used at Tokyo 2020? So we think that uh, the Olympics are a great opportunity because it's all about bringing the world together around sports, right? So what we envision is to be able to deploy as many of these avatar robots throughout Japan before the Olympics so that everybody will be able to participate. It makes it Japan's Olympics and not just Tokyo's Olympics. It makes it the world's Olympics. The world's Olympics, that's true. I think that's the winner. Let's wrap it up. And over to the south of Tokyo, telecommunications company NTT are developing groundbreaking technology called Karari. I can't wait to see what's behind the curtain. Which brings an ultra-realistic viewing experience to the world. What did I just walk into? Real players are playing elsewhere. And with our image segmentation technology, uh -huh. they are transmitted and reproduced at the stage so that they appear as if they are really playing right in front of us. Oh, okay, so the table's real and those are holograms. Oh, exactly. wow. It's really hard to tell what's real and what's not. This is crazy. I feel like I'm like in the second row for this intense match. How do you see this being used at the Olympics or the Paralympic Games? There are many people who want to come to the venue but mm -hmm. cannot come. I hope this technology will be used at theater, uh -huh. not only in Japan, but also around the world. Wow. And that's not all Karari has to offer. Tell me about the Karari Wide technology. It is truly a game changer. We have developed a special video stitching mm -hmm. technology. We can stitch uh, images so quickly and so smoothly mm -hmm. that uh, you can see where the boundaries are. It's one seamless shot. This is going to change the way people watch sports forever. Imagine this with football, baseball, all the Olympic sports. It really just takes it to the next level. It has been used in MLB public viewing in the U.S. So you can do this live? Yes. 
it's also suitable for Olympics or Paralympic Games. So many of the technologies I've seen since I've been here have been so that more people can experience what it's like to really be there. I think that's so special. Yeah, distance doesn't matter. Yeah, distance does not matter, not anymore. First Look is sponsored by the Government of Japan. Shortly after the Tokyo Olympics, Japan's capital will be back on hosting duties for the Paralympics where athletes with disabilities will compete across 540 events in 22 sports. And Japanese companies RDS, Furo, and 1 to 10 are working to bring para sports to the mainstream. So, Tokyo 2020. Yep. How excited are you to have the Olympics here? Very exciting. Yeah. We waited for the opportunity uh -huh. to show the world how amazing Japan's creation can be. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to show you the Cyberwing X. Cyber Wheel X was developed with aim of uh, people experiencing the wheelchair race. Parasports are huge. It is, yeah. And this is a way for people to connect. We need more ways to communicate to the people that makes you think, I want to try. It is cool. So shall we play? Yeah, are you ready for these? <laughs> are you ready? Let's do this. God, you're so much faster than me already. Oh, sorry. You gotta go faster. Turn left, turn left. Whoa! This is so cool. You got like a tour of Tokyo if your arms can handle it. Downhill, ready? Whee! Second place, big shocker. <laughs> that was tough. It is, I'm right? Like, I'm like out of breath right now. Tell me about the actual, like, Cyber Wheel X that I'm sitting in right now. Like, there's actually resistance. Basically, um, they have a hundred weight technology, so it gives you a force, like, mm -hmm. uphill and downhills. Well, it's a VR technology, which transport the user to the year 2100. Yeah, I just thought it was really cool because you're actually, like, getting to see Shinjuku and Shibuya and the Rainbow yeah. Bridge. You're, like, traveling through Tokyo, and yeah. then you take your headset off, and you're like, oh, wait, where am I again? You had the tour in the one minute in Tokyo. Yeah, exactly. When I do watch this Paralympic sport now, I'm going to feel so so much more respect for these people and so much more connection exactly. to the work that they do. Exactly. It is yeah. hard. Thank you so much. Thank that you very much. really, really fun. From a sport of speed to a sport of strategy. So tell me about the sport of bocce. Bocce is a sport of Europe, and it's a sport of the people who are in Europe. Mr. Takayuki Hirose won the silver medal in Bocha at the 2016 Rio Paralympics. And he's looking forward to competing on his home turf this summer. So who better than Mr. Hirose to test out Cyber Bocha S, the high-tech para sport designed for everyone, where, just like Bocha, the player who gets their balls closest to the white jack ball is the winner. Tell me about some of the features. The biggest feature is the sensor. It can detect the ball's position automatically. Mm -hmm. And also the big display. You can see it from the multi angle. We believe this is good for the, the sports to make people get into the sport. Now, the book of the para sports is not just a sport, but it's not a sport. It's a lot of things that you can do. It's a lot of things that you can do. Here we go, my friend. I have a feeling I'm about to get my butt kicked. Yes. <laughs> Good? He's got like the prep swing. Here we go. Woo wee! Oh, man. I get right next to it and he just knocks it out of the way. Yes! Yeah, he knocks the ball. Good job? Yeah. Good ball. Yeah. Pro. I'm just gonna line him up right now. And that's why he's a medalist. Gee, I wonder who won. Well played, my friend. <laughs> Good game. <laughs> nice one. 
Thank you. Just over an hour north of Tokyo by bullet train, natural beauty and historic sites abound in the prefecture of Fukushima. 600 years of history. Famed for its cherry blossom in the spring and blankets of pristine powder-like snow in the winter, Japan's third largest prefecture will be thrust into the spotlight during the Tokyo Olympics. Not only playing host to some of the games, but also serving as the starting point for the torch relay. But Japan hopes that Fukushima's legacy will extend well beyond the games. Maybe the Olympic Games is the moment that marks when everyone looks back and says, oh, that's when hydrogen transformed the world. Home to the world's largest hydrogen production facility, the Fukushima Hydrogen Energy Research Field is shaping Japan's vision for the future. So I know you're the expert, but as simply as you can put it for someone like me, what exactly is hydrogen? Hydrogen is a, well, it's low carbon fuel. It's a very much important role for the future low carbon energy society. Yeah, you think hydrogen is is the fuel of the future. We would like to make the hydrogen one of our energy choices. So tell me about the Fukushima Hydrogen Energy Research Field. Uh, we provide this green hydrogen. Mm -hmm. uh, we can produce the hydrogen from the renewable energy source. Fukushima uh, has a large scale uh, water electrolysis. Mm -hmm. uh, we put the electricity in the water mm -hmm. and uh, to, to make it hydrogen and uh, oxygen mm -hmm. with the electricity. How is Japan planning on using hydrogen power at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. One is uh, transportation to increase the number of the fuel cell buses. One of the stations of fuel cell, we install the uh, uh, athlete villages. In athlete villages. Right. So they'll actually be run on hydrogen. Yes. Wow. Right. And also they will uh, decide to, to utilize hydrogen for the Olympic frame. And so the Olympic torch is going to be right. lit by hydrogen? Right. Oh, wow. That is a really good, yes. really good showcase for it all. Fuel cell vehicles are integral in realizing a hydrogen-based society. So what better way to explore the historic prefecture of Fukushima than in a car powered by the future? Right now I'm driving a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. It's really smooth, it's quiet. You don't even know that the car is on. No carbon emissions. First stop, the traditional town of Ochijuku. It's all about it's uh, it's like out of a movie. Ochijuku was a small post station in Japan's Edo period. The post towns were dotted along the road to Edo, mm -hmm. where samurai went to get rice and mm -hmm. food supplies. So they stayed the night mm -hmm. one of the post towns along the way. It's like a, a time warp. Yeah. And it's not just the buildings that date back to the Edo period. Uh, this is a shingoro mochi, rice cake inside mm -hmm. and around the rice cake, miso. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. It's like a really nice gooey ball of rice that they dipped in a sweet paste. But what Fukushima is really known for is their peaches. Time for a quick pit stop. Ooh, what's this? Peach juice. Thank you so much. It's like candy in a glass. Peach jam. Mm. Mm, it's so good. It tastes like they picked it from the tree yesterday. I love Fukushima. It is such a nice break from the hustle and bustle of Tokyo. I just didn't expect there to be so much natural beauty and tradition. It's really peaceful and beautiful. Right now, we are heading to a castle. So this is a place where the mighty Aizu clan fought and lost their last samurai battle. And thousand samurai died, including female samurai warriors. The last samurai. Yeah. Heard that before. So shall we head inside? Yes. You can go up to the roof. Yes, you. Oh my god. So I cannot imagine what this looks like when cherry blossoms are in bloom. Yeah. The trees are everywhere. And my tour of Fukushima ends at Higashiyama Hot Spring for the ultimate taste of Japanese culture. Wow. 
Arigato gozaimashita. Tell me about this dinner ceremony. This is a huge spread. こう、お料理を普段食べれないようなお料理をいただきながら踊りを見たりお酒を飲んだりするのがあの日本の伝統的な芸者集の遊び方だと思います。Are you guys excited to have Tokyo 2020, the Olympics and Paralympics right in your hometown? なんかどんな風になるのかワクワクしますね。何かそんなとこでお役に立てたら嬉しいですね。<笑> So there you have it, Japan, where the old and the traditional intersect with the future, a country of juxtapositions that will be bringing the height of innovation to a sporting event that dates back centuries. And as it prepares to amaze the world with its cutting edge technology, nice to meet you. the Olympic motto has never felt so fitting. Faster, higher, stronger. Tokyo 2020, we're ready for you. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you.